Hi, my name's Keith Bates. I'm the director of Mutually Inclusive Partnerships, which is an organisation that brings together a number of social enterprises, programmes and initiatives that are designed to improve employment outcomes for people with SEND. I'm delighted to be presenting today to share some of our experiences in supporting people um, on their journey to work and some of the approaches that we found helpful in doing so. But I'd like to start with a reminder of the suddenly low employment rates experienced by people with learning disability. The fact that the employment rate has hovered around 6-7% for the last decade and longer should be a stark reminder that uh, we all need to work harder and think more carefully about how we refer people, how we support people and how we help people think about their employment journeys. But yet we know what works. We know that when we give good quality support to people and those people are interested in finding work, we can match their skills, interests and aspirations with the needs of local employers and that way we get good outcomes. So I want to spend today thinking about this statement and, and to break it down into three parts. Firstly, what we, give, what we mean by good quality support. Secondly, how do we develop more people interested in finding work? And thirdly, how we link those to the needs of local employers. So for good quality support, I generally refer to something called supportive employment, which is widely held to be the best approach to supporting people with learning disabilities into work. It represents a set of values and practices that are underpinned by two really important principles. The first is that everybody can work if we can figure out how to support them. Everybody has an economic contribution to make. The second is that the best place to learn a job is often in the job itself. Now these obviously challenge some of the preparing for work or work readiness models that are available and we need to be careful before referring to people to those types of programs because there is less evidence to suggest that they work for many people with learning difficulties. So support and employment is real work in an integrated setting with ongoing support provided by an agency with expertise in finding employment for people with disabilities. Um, the British Association of Support and Employment would say that, wouldn't they? Um, but I think what we really are talking about is this is real work, um, it's in real work settings, and it's for real money. So the, 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 the word real is, is uh, most uh, uh, loud in, in that slide. Uh, but again, it reiterates the idea that we recognise the support requirement, but we recognise that that re support is happening somewhere um, already actively engaged in employment, i.e. the workplace. It has a process, um, it varies depending on who you talk to, how many steps to that process, um, but commonly held to be either five or seven steps. I show here the five step um, process of support employment starts with client engagement, the referral process, the identifying of someone who wants a job, we'll come on to that later. Um, vocational profiling is the getting to know you bit, it's so the idea that a, a job coach or a supported employment agency really understands the, the uh, skills, interests and aspirations of the, the young person. Um, and matches that to the, the, the knowledge they have of, of employers. What's the local economic um, situation? Who's recruiting? What types of jobs are difficult to fill? What's going on um, in any one case? And, and certainly right at the moment, we've got a lot of disruption to the employment um, market. Um, some jobs that were previously seen as low status have raised significantly. Others are going to be more difficult. We're changing the way we work. And that's an ongoing, that's an ongoing picture that is, is always ongoing. It's particularly acute and, uh, at the moment, but we've always seen changes in the labour market. And then the idea of on and off jobs job support um, recognises that, that at times when someone's first in, in the new workplace they might need a higher level of support then that might be able to fade but then should there be any changes to sequence task sequence that new manager or a different place of work or or any other significant changes then that support might need to be ramped up um, again. But the overall strategy is about making sure the employers get the right worker and the job seekers get the right job. That's the really important bit here because it's relatively easy to get someone a job. What's harder is to find a job that's sustainable and will work for the long term. And that's where the, the importance of trained and experienced job coaching and supported employment comes into it. As I said, there's plenty of evidence um, of, of its efficacy. 
evidence that the uh, OECD described as unequivocal um, that results in higher wages, improved outcomes, greater self-esteem, longer hours, more sustainable jobs and um, the support being more cost effective. Um, really importantly that this research, research um, repeatedly and as you can see um, some of this dates back to the 80s repeatedly suggests that supported employment is um, one of the uh, most efficient effective uh, approaches to supporting young people um, with disabilities into work. So one of the really exciting um, developments in the last few years has been the uh, introduction of supported internships, which build on that efficacy of supported employment. Uh, designed for young people in their last year of school or college and following a typical academic year from September to July, supported internships uh, are designed to remove the, the learning from the classroom and bung it into the workplace. This is, this is about having supported work experience uh, significant time working with employers alongside the English and maths and and uh, representing a, a proper match between the interests of the interns and the needs of the employer that I explored and explained with the support employment process and that use of uh, specialist job coaching alongside the formal educator. Supported internships uh, provide a, a really important plan progression towards employment and uh, develop partnerships with the different partners having specific roles to en enable a, a flexible, uh, flexible and, and personalised approach. So in Bristol we've got six programmes currently just about to start. Um, uh, typically there's been bef between 40 and 50 young people each year. Those numbers are increasing with ambitious plans over the next couple of years uh, with a strong partnership between the colleges, the supported employment provider and the local authorities. And each local authority has its own manifestation of, of internships. Uh, Mencap as, as well run their own uh, programme and, and certainly in Bristol uh, there's a very proud um, 70 to 75 uh, percent job outcomes, which shows a significant shift from the 7% um, employment rate that we um, saw in, in the first slide. So the supported employment provide a really good example of how we can develop more young people to have a real interest in finding work and a real understanding that they too might make a great employee. And by working with employers with the proper support, we've shown um, over the years that we do know what works when it comes to raising people with with higher aspirations and certainly that work is is happening in in bristol and the surrounding local authorities to raise young people's aspirations expectations of, of and, and assumptions of, of having a work in future but it's not just the young people themselves it's about their families and work with the the, the parents and carers it's work with the way of the community and it's work most importantly with the employers as employers get to understand that there are real business reasons for employing people with SEND. One example of this is, is the introduction of the When I Grow Up programme in many of the special schools in the area. Uh, designed by the Foundation for People with Learning Disabilities, When I Grow Up is, is really um, about increasing work aspirations and, and opportunities by starting conversations about work much earlier in young people's lives. To get young people to, to think about jobs, to, to see examples of people like them already in paid employment, to understand that they have skills and qualities that can be developed and to see that those skills and qualities link in some cases already to the expectations of employers. When I Grow Up is a, a great example of, of raising aspirations and has similar um, workshops and, and resources designed for, for families as well. Consisting of, of tools and resources freely available for, for educators and, and community groups alike to, to start having those conversations with a whole load of, of session plans and, and uh, workbooks for young people to work through to start thinking about their skills and capturing their own ideas about their own ideal job, the support requirements they might have and to think about what, what good support might look like for them. Because we know that when we get the support right, Employers are interested in talking to us. Employ when we allow employers to make their widgets or deliver their services, employers can understand with the right support that the guys we're working with can make a great contribution to their aims. 
And so we can help employers change the way they recruit to make slight adjustments in, in their processes and practices. And we know that we get these really great outcomes, not only in the internship programmes, but also in the wider community programmes that are run locally as well. And it's not just about working with employers. The same processes apply also when people are interested in, in exploring self-employment and small business ownership. More and more people are now turning to enterprise as one way of creating their own jobs. And we're seeing this across the various sectors, gardening, catering, arts and crafts, cleaning companies. And there's, there's quite a, an extensive experience locally and further afield of, of people who've explored self-employment and found it really uh, a really engaging way of creating employment. Employment that, that closely matches those individuals' preferences and gifts. Employment that, that creates types of work that might not be found by working with an employer. Uh, that provides some element of control um, and uh, different ways of working so that individuals can schedule their work in time to better meet their personal uh, preferences and, and productivity levels, personal goals, etc. It's also seen as the next step in the evolution of supported employment. And there are a number of really great examples of how self-employment has been used to create employment for people who've previously not been considered uh, job ready or, or appropriate for a paid work. A great example of this is, is the story of Delroy. Delroy is a chap who um, has lived in hospital and, and group homes all his life, had had uh, two to one support because he was considered to challenge services and was really considered incapable of work. That is until his support worker Joe came along and said, actually, Delroy has got a contribution to make. We just haven't figured out what it was. So Joe was a, a inspirational in bringing people together to try and understand Delroy and, and find out what his likes and dislikes were going to be. Delroy uh, doesn't use speech, so we needed people who knew Delroy and understood him to, to help us with this. But very quickly, we found out that Delroy liked to crush plastic milk bottles, that he enjoyed walking and being outdoors, and he loved transport and going places. At the same time, the local authority in which Delroy lived were promoting plastic recycling, yet not collecting plastic. So a lot of Delroy's neighbours were collecting plastic milk bottles and keeping them in a, in, in a, on their doorstep, waiting for a time to, to take them down to Tesco's. Very quickly, a small leafleting campaign found that actually uh, most of his neighbours were, or many of his neighbours were, were prepared to pay Delroy to take those plastic bottles away and get them recycled for them. So Delroy was supported to set up a small local collection service, charging uh, per bag once or twice a week. He'd go around collect using existing resources, the uh, existing transport he had, the support he already had, um, and served his local community, which was a, a really important shift in his relationship with his neighbours. Delroy was now giving to the community rather than taking away from the community. And at the same time, really importantly, solving a, uh, solving a, a, a local headache. And perhaps best of all, Delroy was later nominated for a, a recycling award and, and came runner up uh, in the National um, Community Recycling Competition. Got to go to London, got to wear a suit, got to meet a celebrity and a, a waste disposal um, executive to receive his award. And, and I really like this photo because the Delroy on the right is not the same person as the Delroy on the left. And it, and it illustrates not only the power of, of employment, and in this case, enterprise, in transforming people's lives, but also the power of good support and the role that Joe specifically played as a catalyst in transforming um, Delroy's life. And he's not alone. Other people, too, have used self-employment as, as a way to, to work. Robin on the left here is a graphic facilitator and illustrator who works nationally to develop opportunities through his artwork to attend conferences and, and to create art and, and which, which enables the conference facilitators to um, represent imaginative ways to present the key messages of their, their conferencing. Adam uh, is, a, is a keen gardener who provides garden maintenance services. Uh, and Dana is a, a, a person um, who provides floristry services, all of which are using self-employment and, and, 
and uh, business and enterprise processes to create their own work that fits their own lives, that, that meets their own skills, interests and aspirations. And it's also possible to do this in groups. So social enterprises and co-ops and other ways of forming collective ways of creating work are also uh, really important inclusions in, in, the, in, in the suite of opportunities for people. So 25 years ago, a group of people with learning disabilities in Bristol came together because they were fed up with not being able to get a job elsewhere and formed their own company. Established in 1995, it was set up as a, a limited company with cooperative rules and is understood to be the first company to be entirely run by people with learning disabilities. Clean Sweep is still going to this day and, and as with many companies, is struggling. The pandemic has, has caused enormous disruption to the way they work. But yet as an organisation and a group of people, they come together with support, with um, different ways of doing stuff to, in order to keep the company going. They hold regular meetings. They have job coaching support for the, for the work in the workplace. They have pastoral support and, and to make sure that as individuals, they know what they're doing, help with benefits, worries and concerns and, and the ability to develop as, as individuals. And of course, as a company, they need to have payroll in, and, and accountancy services, which they outsource through the profits of the company. And it's a really important way. And, and clearly, over 25 years, the, the, the members of Clean Sweep have, have changed completely. The, the founding members have, have all left. Um, but it was a really important example of how coming together and collectively and thinking creatively can also create employment for people. And there are loads of tools and resources to help us, to help us support people think through their employment journey, to navigate their way to work. The Foundation's Employer's Guide contains case studies of people who have undertaken a journey to work. It illustrates how they've used uh, job coaching support, how internships have helped them, the changes that employers have needed to make. The When I Grow Up programme, although designed for schools, contains a whole load of resources and, and workshops and session plans that any of us can use in working with young people who are thinking about their employment journey. The Digital Job Coach sessions um, by 16 Cooperative have done just that. They've taken the When I Grow Up worksheets and they've turned them into exercises that are online and available on the, the 16 website. And my own work the uh, guides to self-employment are available to help people think through a business idea and the types of things they need to think about when they're developing an enterprise or, or self-employment opportunity. So I want to just bring this to a close uh, by recognition of the importance of families. Uh, I introduce myself as uh, bringing together a number of initiatives and programmes and enterprises to do the work, but um, none of them would be particularly successful without the engagement of families. Families hold much of what we do together and, and they provide the support before and after work. Importantly, they relay the aspirations but also the anxieties that can be fuelled by a frustration and concern with our tendency to do things in, in small chunks. We have, have initiatives for two years, our funding cycles and then programmes disappear. Uh, we constantly change who we, we send into families and, and who works with their young people and the families are left with an uncertain future and they're not certain wh whether the, the, the support is sustainable. It's them who have to take the day off if a job fails or a crisis hits. It's them that, that carry the responsibility for our failure to get the support right which is why I link everything back to those values of the supported employment process. Yet families play a really vital role in the employment journey and can create innovative, innovative solutions themselves. So we do know what works. We know that good quality support linked to people who are interested in finding work and matching skills, interests and aspirations to the needs of local employers or enterprise opportunities lead to good job outcomes. We also know that not all people with learning disabilities are able to benefit from the full range of training for skills before they enter a job but that it doesn't mean that they cannot be employed. And I hope to have illustrated the different ways that we found helpful in, in developing opportunities for people with learning disabilities, either working for an employer as self-employed or creating an enterprise. So the summary, therefore, is thinking about starting with the individual. 
uh, is, is about aiming high. It's uh, using the trained and experienced support. It's involving families. It's uh, being creative. And it's making sure that we are not part of the problem. We know what works. And we know that people with SEND can and do make great employees, colleagues and entrepreneurs. Thank you very much.